Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, Roy Lupton takes the debate about shooting foxes with air guns and knocks it on the head. Improve your dog, we're out with a gun dog training expert from Skinner's Pet Foods. First, a lad called Strats has just passed his dear management qualification. We see if he can put the theory into practice. Mark Strats Stratton is exactly the kind of person it's a pleasure to welcome to our sport. He's enthusiastic, keen to learn and has a sense of humour. After years rabbit shooting and air gunning, he wants to start deer stalking. He seeks advice on the stalking directory forum. Not only do they give him advice, they club together, pay for him to take his deer management qualification, the DSC1, and they even take him out stalking. This is really good, this is encouraging it's people to go stalking. Excellent, yeah, because the, that's what the guys wanted to do, was put some something back into stalking, basically. Um, and it's just snowballed from there. I mean, this year I've been out six times. I've managed to shoot my first fallow and mudjack. So I, I owe a lot to those guys and the forum itself. We are joining this new trend of introducing strats to stalking and thanks to the generosity of professional stalkers John Button and Alex Hinkins, he is going out after an animal today in Suffolk. It's also thanks to the generosity of Browning, which is lending him a Browning X-Bolt rifle, ammunition and a Zeiss Duralit scope. He also has an Aimsonic moderator thanks to importer Alan Roan, one of a range of Aimsonic moderators which we pick up from one of Strats's local gun shops, John Bradshaw near Peterborough. Honestly, the number of people involved in and giving strats a good time. It's like Jim will fix it without the scandal. What do I normally shoot? Yeah. Uh, two, four, three, and just on here for the rabbits. Uh, I've got a two, two WMR. Yeah. Um, FAC air as well, but that don't seem to get used so much these days. <laughs> but uh, I've got a three R eight recently, but I've not had chance to use that too much at the moment. So. Yeah. Strats is using Browning's new green ammunition. Here's Browning's David Stapley to explain it. Traditionally some forms of non-lead uh, ammunition both in shotgun shells and in centrefire ammunition. Some people could have said it hasn't had the density or the knockdown power so the energy transfer into the animal. Uh, with the E-tip, this special formula of, of zinc and copper, it's a gilded metal, what we call a gilded metal alloy of zinc and copper. And um, one of the features of this bullet is it actually retains nearly 100% of its density, so it has the maximum transfer of energy into the animal. <laughs> Strats's target itself is a fine example of stalking directory humour. That one was me pulling it, but... <laughs> You're a despicable man. <laughs> a terrible, terrible target. Um, yeah, it does... <laughs> yeah, it does make us chuckle every time we look through the scope, to be honest. Happily, Strats is no bum shot. Here is his DSC-1 target, shot from prone, kneeling and standing off sticks. He's proud of it. We joined Strats for part of his DSC in Thetford Forest. He has to walk around a wood with his Basque assessors, saying whether or not a shot is good. He doesn't know yet that he will pass, so you can see the stress in his face. Yeah, I think I'm all right. I've done a bit of shooting, so I'm, yeah, I'm okay. I'm yeah. confident. Which Quietly confident. Which, which has been the tricky bit so far? The paperwork and the assessments yesterday. Now, the written assessments? Yes, definitely. What, yeah. what was wrong with that? Um, just the nervousness, I think. It's like being back at school. Um, yeah, the um, <laughs> IDs were the tricky ones for me. But yeah, I think it's okay. Interesting. It's been good. Most of the questions are straightforward. Will you shoot a deer when there's another deer behind it? Answer, no. But some of them catch strats out, like this one. He spots the distant deer. It's the one right next to him he can't see. At the end of the session, strats is relieved. His assessor is happy too. He was a good lad, he was a good lad. Um, yeah, we've, we've just had the, um, the safety walk, Charlie, and um, we've done that in the, in the style of a simulated stalk. Um, Mark's identified five deer in there, and uh, he's, he's aired on the side of caution, um, but that's no bad thing, and he's given me some, some really good uh, reasons why he would or wouldn't have, have shot the deer. And uh, we've gone through the questions, um, very thorough answers, and uh, I'm really pleased with him. Back to our day and we meet John Button who looks after the deer management on thousands of acres of land in Suffolk and he loves his job. There is here, we have Fala, uh, Roe, Monkjack and we get the occasional red come through but not resident here at all. Um, so hopefully you'll see one of them. <laughs> 
Now we have a little game to play today. So Strats has got his piece of paper saying he can stalk deer, but how good is he really? John and I have agreed not to say what species he's likely to see today. First up, this deer bounces out of the wood. John spots that it has a fawn hidden away in the undergrowth next to us, so we walk slowly past it. Next, we spot this animal. John reckons it is high-stepping this way to place its feet carefully in between the sharp stubbles. Later on, John shows us some of the heads he has had off this ground, including this monster he's in the middle of bleaching. Here's two nice-sized ones that we've shot from around here for this ground. Um, quite some good size. Yeah. Very thick, quite heavy. Yes. Gold? Sorry, I'm not sure. I've hoped to find out tomorrow at the Glenham Fair. And we've got some interesting ones here. We've heard, you can see from fighting, um, if this one here is a small one, you can see this hole in the side, which isn't a bullet, um, which I'm pretty sure possibly is in fighting with doing rut with an antler into it. Heavens, and he survived. And he survived, yeah. yeah. But he didn't when he met me. <laughs> Back to our stalk, and John spots a herd of, oh, what are they, Strats? There's a pricket in the middle, an ideal cull animal. We stalk carefully up to the side of the wood and, well, let's pick up the story after the event. John and Strats are sitting on the back of the vehicle to give us the post-match post-mortem. I felt comfortable, felt good on the shot, um, and I think I just pulled the shot. And I'm pretty sure, I think we're all pretty sure that I shot straight underneath it. Um, so I'm gutted, absolutely gutted. Um, well, far better you are than the deer is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And it, it is one of them things and I'm sure you carry on stalking, I'm going to have other moments like this, but... At least it's completely missed and not a wounded deer yes. we, haven't, we haven't recovered. Yeah. So, uh, but, um, that's one good thing. Yeah. You know. so we're saying that stalking, do, do, you, do you think you will uh, you'll come round to that point of view? Me? Yeah. Oh yeah, I'll only take a few minutes, I'm just, just uh, yeah, get a rough night's sleep out of the way tonight and I'll be fine in the morning. It's not going to stop me, obviously. Never mind, mate. We've even seen George Digweed put in a second shot. Not often, but we've seen it. And all you stalking directory lot, when you get strats online after you've seen this, please play nicely. Well, we have made loads of films about much more successful deer stalking, and if you want to watch some of them, you can click on the link that's appearing up there behind me. Now, from one unhappy stalker to the world of human misery, it is David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Britain News. The pilot badger cull in Somerset is proving more scary for the antis than it is the colours. A local man who rides his bicycle to the pub shouted at a couple of farm dogs that usually run out to chase him, causing a group of badger cull protesters hiding in a nearby hedge to scream in fear. The cull itself is proceeding to plan and organisers are pleased with progress to date, according to the government. Our destruction test Zeiss binoculars have raised a few pounds for charity. After 39 bids, the eBay auction winner paid £360 for the slightly bruised Conquest HD binos. All the money will be donated to Safari Club International and their work with the World Forum on Shooting Sports. Staying with good deeds and generosity, here's a shout out to the guys on the Stalking Directory Forum. Fellow member Brian Murphy of Lanarkshire was desperately in need of help to find the funds to build a downstairs bedroom and wet room for his 18-year-old daughter Lee, who has cerebral palsy. Within hours of mentioning his plight to a fellow stalker, the lads on the forum had set up an auction to raise the cash. In all, £5,000 was raised. Brian and his family just wanted to say thank you. Back to the ridiculous stuff, and the Mississippi alligator record was broken not once, but twice during the opening weekend of the season. Beth Tramell of Madison and her team of five broke the previous record of 697 and a half pounds early Saturday morning by reeling in a 723 and a half pounder. Her record was defeated two hours later by Dustin Bockman, another amateur who managed to wrangle in a 272 pound male, his very first catch. Antis in California have come up with an ingenious way of banning hunting. The California government is looking at banning all hunting with lead bullets, arguing that hunters could use lead alternatives. However, the federal government has classed lead alternative bullets as armour-piercing, 
and has banned them. So, no bullets, no hunting. A gang caught poaching peacocks in India faced between three and seven years in prison. In a midnight operation, a forest protection squad arrested three people for poaching seven peacocks and three peahens at a village in the south of the country. What do you do if you've got an airport, a pest problem, and you don't like guns? Well, an airport in Pennsylvania, USA, has solved the problem by allowing bow hunting on its 2,000 acre site. If you'd like to apply, visit flypittsburgh.com forward slash archery. A match angler has broken the record for weight of fish caught in a single competition. Lee Kerry caught 513 pounds of carp in five hours, filling 13 keep nets at Worcestershire's Cobb House Fisheries. He had to put out so many keep nets, he had trouble finding anywhere to fish. And finally, ever wondered what it'd be like to be eaten by a bear? Here's some footage of a black bear in northern Saskatchewan chewing up a GoPro camera. Thanks to Guy Baxendale for sending us the link. You are now up to date with Field Sports Britain News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Savage haircut. Now, let's see if air guns can do more than part the fur on a fox's head. It is pellet power and performance. Big bore FAC air rifles are controversial and the ownership can be complicated. Many people hate them, especially on the continent where in countries such as Germany you can't even shoot a rat with a plinker. But these guns do have a big following in the USA and the Netherlands where you don't need a licence. And the larger calibres are becoming increasingly popular here in the UK. There has been a whole wood's worth of negative press thanks to air gunners shooting larger and larger game, prompting the question, just because you can, does it mean you should? Well, today we're going to try and at least partly address that issue. Will Roy Lupton feel confident enough to shoot a fox with this 30 calibre FX Boss? To help us through today's experiments, we've invited along Phil Price, technical editor of Airgun World and Airgunner magazines, to give us some specialist input and some air. The whole purpose of today is to see, one, the accuracy, and two, if it's an air rifle that you could feasibly use in the field to shoot something, and we were thinking along the lines of possibly a fox. Personally, I've got my, my doubts using FAC air rifles with you know, with animals up to the size of foxes, but what's, what's your, your thoughts on it? It is spectacularly accurate, I will say that. We tested it out to 100 yards. It's probably shooting about an inch and a quarter, which is, I've never so, seen an air gun that accurate. Right. However, you have always got the trajectory to consider, yeah. but it does shoot huge, heavy 50 grain pellets, huge amounts of energy, and it's accurate. Yeah. I think just got to be careful how far you're going to go with it. Would you confidently shoot a fox with a, an FAC air rifle? With this I would, yeah, out right. to about 50 yards. No doubt it would have pretty much the same terminal effect as a, as a rimfire, right. but I wouldn't want to go any further than that. than that. Before Roy points the FX at anything with a heartbeat, we want to make sure there's no doubt about its accuracy. Then we'll look at its ability to kill animals outright. We're going to kick off at around about 50 yards, which is about the maximum range that I'm happy to shoot foxes at with a, a 2-2 rimfire. So we're going to get them both zeroed there. We're then going to drop the target back a little bit and just see what the drop off is. At 50 yards, the rimfire and the FX have no problem hitting the centre of the target. At 60 yards, without holdover, it's a different story. So then we've moved back out to 60 and we've got a hell of a drop off there. So just within the 10 yards, what's that? we've just got two and a half, three inches of drop. So that really has sort of fallen away quite a lot. So if we move back up to the rimfire, so first shot, just clipping on the 10 there at 50 and then we've dropped about an inch. So if we had a fox coming out, you just bring it up a little bit and just aim on the top of his head. Um, whereas you've got a lot more margin for error using the 30 calibre air rifle. Right, time to move on to the fox heads and Phil thinks the FX is going to deliver. At the right distance, yeah, I'm confident it will fully penetrate the fox's skull. Clearly we know the rimfire rounds work. Enough people use them, we've all done it. We, we know it's an effective round. Um, and I think at short range, I think the boss is going to give it a good run for its money. 
we're going to try some with skin on, some with skin off, and we're going to be shooting them all the different calibers at 50 yards. We're going to do the, the sub 12 foot pound air rifle at 50, just to show how inefficient a, a sub 12 foot pound air rifle would be at, uh, at a Fox, um, and just to show that it's not something that we recommend. We are going to shoot the FAC air rifle, which is pumping out at around about 77 foot pounds. So hopefully we're going to get a full penetration. Um, if it's lodged in there, then we'll, uh, we'll try and have a delve about and see what we can find. So we'll start off with a couple without skin on and then we'll leave a couple with the skin on as well. We're going to start with the Webley Raider air gun in 2.2. The reason for using a sub 12 foot pound air rifle is to show its weaknesses, not its strengths. It's a fantastic tool, but it's not accurate or powerful enough to kill a fox and certainly not at 50 yards. Roy has three shots at the target. One misses the fox head completely, but the other two find the head. One shot has gone in near the eye. The other looks like it might have bounced off the top of the skull. This is quite soft here, and it's entered the socket behind the eye, but I'm not quite sure how far it's gone in, so we'll open that up and have a look. And you can see here, I'm not sure if it's penetrated here or just skimmed the skull, so we'll just take back the top layer of muscle here. And we can actually see that the pellet has just punched a small hole in the skull here. Obviously, it's not gone anywhere else. We'll just open that up and see exactly how far the pellet went in. So that, that really has surprised me from the 2-2, and it's, um, I'm not overly happy because I really wouldn't want to shoot a fox with a 2-2 like that. So we'll just open up and see where these pellets are tracked to. Yeah, here we go, look. So if we'd shot here on the fox, you can see pellet's gone in here, just tracked along and into the soft tissue, bearing in mind that's the weakest part of the fox's skull, just on the side of the muzzle here, just in front of the eye socket. Now, all that pellet would have done is to really upset the fox, blinded it in the right eye, but it certainly wouldn't have killed it. That fox would have been running about in a lot of pain and a lot of agony. So that again, just confirms that I really would not want to shoot a fox with a sub 12 foot pound air rifle at that sort of range and we'll just have a look inside and see if we can see where the other pellet's gone in here hang on where are we oh no here we go there's a shard of lead there so yeah what the pellet's actually done is it's broken up it's hit the fox's skull and the pellet has actually split. So we've, we've just got a shard of the pellet has gone into the skull, but not penetrated that deeply. It would have probably just gone in um, and uh, upset him a little bit. So although it would have been writhing around again, it's not, I'm, I'm not confident that that would have been an all out kill shot. So uh, that coupled with the inaccuracy at that sort of range, because the pellets are being affected very heavily by all the external factors such as wind, really does just go to confirm that uh, I would not want to shoot a fox um, morally or ethically uh, with a, a sub 12 foot pound air rifle. Time for the FX boss. The skull has received a devastating blow and the guys are impressed. There's 77 foot pounds at muzzle, that's a lot of energy and at 50 yards that's still carrying a hell of a load of clout. I, I'm really genuinely impressed just how hard that hit. That's hit, And that's yeah. humane, that is a humane hit. Humane kill, no, that's yeah. it. No, without, without a shadow of a doubt, you can't, uh, you can't really question that. And a huge, you know, huge difference between the, uh, the little 2-2, 12 foot pound. And you can feel here, the rest of the, the skull is absolutely shattered from the, uh, the impact and the energy transferring through the skull. So it's broken all the way across here. So there is no way that fox would have been going anywhere. Finally, let's see what the 2-2 rimfire has to offer. It again does the job efficiently and there's not much to separate the last two rifles. There are some who wouldn't use a 2-2 rimfire on a fox at 50 yards. You know, comparably to the, uh, the sort of wind channel that we got from the air rifle, it's, uh, it's pretty much on a par, isn't it? I would say it is, yeah. Roy is convinced that with accurate rangefinding, he would be happy to shoot a fox with the FX out to 50 yards. I still can't summarise from my own perspective quite where it fits in because if you've got a rim fire, you'd probably use the rim fire over yeah, over using absolutely. this. Absolutely, but I mean there are people out there who just love air guns. Yep. 
have got a slot on their ticket would want one, you know, who wouldn't want a 30 caliber air gun? Exactly, no, I mean, it's yeah. A, it's, it's a tremendous it's, thing. Yeah. Is it better than a rimfire? No. Yeah, but yeah, as you say, I mean, a fantastic piece of engineering and yeah. uh, works incredibly yeah. well. If you have any thoughts on FAC air rifles, please let us know and we'll read out some of the clean ones next week. And if you want to find out more information about the FX Boss, go to a-s-i.co.uk. Well, our Pellet Power and Performance series has been on the cutting edge of air gunning. And if you want to see more of them, click on the link on the screen behind me. Now, from a fox's head to another bunch of mugs, it's Hello Charlie. Here's what the world's up to this week. Hello Charlie, I'm Ryan, and earlier this evening I saw a rat in my turkey shed. So I got my air rifle, and this was the outcome. Hello Charlie, Damien here from Surrey. It's seven o'clock in the morning. I've just landed a very nice catfish. Hello Charlie, we're here in South Africa. Just shot a bliss pack. We're busy uh, processing it in our kitchen and we're going to be going hunting pretty soon for some more. Cheers, Charlie. Hello, Charlie, I'm Dan. And I'm Dan. And we're currently building a pigeon hide. Hello, Charlie, it's Joe. And uh, we're from Kent. And uh, just out doing a spot of foxes. And this is what we've got. Hello, Charlie. <laughs> Send us your own Hello Charlie. Film yourself on your mobile phone. Just a sentence saying Hello Charlie, who you are and what you're up to. Then share it or email it via YouTube, Facebook, Dropbox or you send it, you name it, to charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Now here's the latest from Max Hunt, who's heading east towards Kazakhstan, this week through the Czech Republic. Oh, this is heaven on earth. I'm still in uh, the Czech Republic and I had a perfect night. Me shooting a very nice fellow deer and a gold medal uh, mouflon. The plan now is to go roe deer hunting and maybe if we are lucky we will get one of those as well. Gun dogs next. How to make your mutt magnificent with Skinner's Pet Foods. Some people blow their dog whistles more than motorists hit the horn in downtown Manhattan. For top gun dog trainer Ricky Maloney, whistling your dogs is a language. The whistle, I think, is an overused uh, tool in the dog trainer's, uh, dog trainer's armory. What I've got is I've got a stop whistle, which is one long blow. I've got a recall whistle, which is a series of peep peeps. When I'm working the Spaniel, I've got a turn whistle. So when the Spaniel goes so far, I just give him a, a little gentle peep peep, a lot softer peep peep, to turn him and, and hunt him back towards me. I only increase volume over distance. If the dog's trained on the whistle, when I'm working a dog close by, should be more than enough. When I've got the dog a long way out, then I increase volume. If the dog's not listening to that soft whistle at that distance, you can blow as hard as you want, it's not going to, it's not going to listen to you. What I do before I even introduce the whistle is I, I make sure that the dog understands my verbal commands. So when I start introducing the stop whistle, the dog already knows sit. So as the dog sits at the side of me and I say sit, the dog's already started to sit, I blow my stop whistle. What I also do as well is when I'm actually training the dog to go back, or to go left or to go right, I blow a stop whistle when the dog sat looking at me. Because what that stop whistle means is if you look at me, I'm gonna give you command. It's more positive than throwing a dummy for a dog, sending the dog for the dummy, and then trying to stop it halfway. So that stop whistle is actually a positive because the dog knows after that stop whistle it's gonna get a command to get the reward, i.e. the dummy. Ricky Maloney runs Ribblesdale Labradors. This series on gun dog training tips is brought to you by Skinner's Pet Foods, maker of the field and trial range of gun dog feeds. Visit skinnerspetfoods.co.uk. 
So if your dog training needs a full MOT service and oil change, we put all of the Skinner's Pet Foods top training tips on the Skinner's Pet Foods YouTube channel, and you can click on the screen just up there to go through to that. From dogs to the wider world of hunting, shooting and fishing on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting, shooting and fishing videos that YouTube has to offer. I have always liked Sergio Couto's films, and he is getting better and better. My Glorious 12 Grouse Shooting in Scotland shows his first shots on driven grouse. That's not the only bird season getting underway. With the wildfowling, goose and duck shooting going strong in the UK, here is some good goose shooting from Sweden via GoPro with a glam rock track. Another season that's opening is the State of Virginia Squirrel Season. Starts 14th September and runs until the end of January, and there are officially 80,000 squirrel shooters in Virginia, making it the second most popular shooting sport in the state after the 179,000 who go white-tailed buck hunting. Well, this is a comedy Virginia squirrel hunting video by two lads who are nearly quite funny when they mean to be, and even funnier when they don't. On to fishing. I have featured him before, and I will gladly feature him again, partly because I got his home country wrong last time. Killian Farrell does not live in the USA, but in Cork in Ireland, and has done all his life. Here he is with friend Dan Gill tackling conga on a kayak in Cork. Harbour. Fluke Master has a following in the USA. This is his film about how to catch bass under a bridge, which applies to lots of fish you can find under bridges. I can think of a few. Viewer Guy Baxendale has the new iScope from Highland Outdoors, which allows you to record what you see through your rifle scope on your iPhone. Here is his film iScoping Scottish Bunnies. Viewer Jim Powell from New Zealand likes this about quail shooting on North Island. He calls it an interesting bit of filming and dog work, and the bag is 19 birds. Finally, it looks a bit vain plugging one of your own shows in hunting YouTube, but here is Schools Challenge TV, which we run for organiser David Florence, and he is ever so proud of this show, all about Abby Burton, which came out just two days after she won the Universal Trench World Championship in Slovenia. 2016, here she comes. You can click on any of these films to watch them if you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, we are back next week, and if you are watching this on YouTube, please don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button that's around the edge of the screen, moving as it usually does from left to right and top to bottom. Or go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. Or scroll down to the bottom of the page and pop your email address into our constant contact box, and we will constantly contact you about our programme that's out 7pm every Wednesday UK time. This has been Field Sports Britain.